All right, let's continue. Still slips off. Last step. Ooh, I miss you guys. <laughs> no, actually, God actually spoke to me, and um, I need to go back and redo. Um, there's more I need to talk about and some other steps. So this won't be the last. Hmm. Okay. Ew. Oh, it's gross. Anyway, um, talking the walk. When we realize everything we have gained by following the 12 steps, it will be natural to want to share life-giving message with others. If we think back to the time before we entered recovery, we will probably recall that we didn't respond very well to preaching. Yet, we also realize that there are people in our life who could be helped by our message. That is why we need to communicate our story, but do it with sensitivity. The Apostle Paul taught Timothy that to get the gospel message across, he was not only to teach others, but also be an example by putting his beliefs into practice. So, not be readers of the word, but doers of the word. So, Paul said, give your complete attention to these matters. Throw yourself into your task so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on how you live and on your teaching. Stay true to what is right for the sake of your own salvation and the salvation of those who hear you. That's 1 Timothy 4, 15, 16. When we practice these principles of the 12 steps, others will be watching and notice the changes. This will open the doors for us to share our story. Every addict is a precious lost soul whom God loves and wants to rescue. If someone among you wanders away from the truth, whoever brings the sinner back will save that person from death and bring about the forgiveness of many sins. And that is James 5, 19, 20. And that was a fast one. <laughs> Let me um, continue with uh, Titus. So Titus Three is never forget. As we get further along in recovery, the memory of how bad our life really was may begin to fade. Do we vividly remember what we once were? Can we humbly recall the dark emotions that filled our soul? Do we have true compassion and genuine sympathy for those to whom we try to carry the message? When we take the message of recovery to others, we must never forget where we came from and how we got there and where we are now. Paul told Titus, once we too were foolish and disobedient. Once we too were foolish and disobedient, we were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. But when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us not because of the righteous things we had done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth in a new life through the Holy Spirit. And that's Titus 3 through 5. Do what is good. Remind the believers to submit to the government and its 
officials, officers, sorry. They should be obedient, always ready to do what is good. They must not slander anyone and must avoid quarreling. Instead, they should be gentle and show, show true humility to everyone. Once we too were foolish and disobedient, we were misled and became slaves to many lusts and pleasures. Our lives were full of evil and envy, and we hated each other. But when God, our Savior, revealed his kindness and love, he saved us. Not because of the righteous things we have done, but because of his mercy. He washed away our sins, giving us a new birth and a new life through the Holy Spirit. He generously poured out the Spirit upon us through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Because of his grace, he declared us righteous and gave us confidence that we will inherit eternal life. This is a trustworthy saying, and I want you to insist on these teachings so that all who trust in God will devote themselves to do good. These teachings are good and beneficial for everyone. We too were foolish and disobedient and became a slave to our dependency. We were filled with resentment, envy, and hate. But God delivered us from this through his son Jesus. Our broken life is the backdrop against which the bright jewels of God's mercy and gracious salvation are displayed. None of us deserves God's mercy and grace. He loves us simply because he chooses to, more in spite of us than because we deserve it. This truth makes it easier to admit our powerlessness and commit our life to God. No matter how terrible our past, God is willing to forgive and transform us. Only if we are willing. That's why I say to you, my friend, pray for the willingness to be willing. Every day, because people will try to take that control back. Even I, me, yes, I'm guilty of it. Uh uh uh. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. Okay, sorry. <laughs> uh, okay. Notice the terms that describe God's grace, kindness, and love and mercy. We are justified by God's grace, declared righteous in God's eyes by virtue of belonging to Christ. This takes us off the performance treadmill, relieving us of the need to measure up to God's fulfill and unrealistic ideas of our parents, teachers, or bosses. He doesn't expect us to be perfect. He knows we cannot do it alone. When he calls us to holy living, he also provides the power and direction we need to build a new life. Yes, he does. <laughs> um, so, as we share our message, let us never forget the following truths. We were once a slave, just as others are today. Our heart was filled with the confusion and painful emotions that others still feel. We were saved because of the love and kindness of God, not because we were good enough. We must always remember that we can stay free because God is with us, upholding us every step of the way. You know, God is holding us every step of the way. Even, you know, our bad days, our good days, when we think that he is not there, you know, he is there. And he is there all day long. And, you know, my past has been forgiven, right? And... 
some, I mean, when it's forgiven, it's, it's not in your face anymore. <laughs> you know, it's, it's like, you almost forget, but you don't forget. And, you know, I don't forget about that, that, that person that I was. You know, that was just, uh, a selfish, stubborn, evil, I mean, I was just an evil person, you know, it wasn't who I was, you know, I wasn't that, it was just those actions, that my behavior was just so not like who I am today, <laughs> and it's because I allowed God to transform my life. And like in one of the steps we just read, you know, are you that person that will go and talk about it and tell everybody about your story? Or are you that person that is hesitant because you, you know, you think it's too trivial that no one's really going to care? Is it really going to reach anybody? You know, because you will have the devil in your head saying, oh, no one cares about your story. It's not going to reach anybody. This and that, blah, blah, blah. Rebuke it in the name of Jesus. Flee. Turn the other way. Because your story does matter. You don't know who, what life you can save. What life, what person it will touch that the Spirit of God will move into that person because it's only by the Spirit of God that that person is saved. But He will use you if you allow Him. But you got to tell your story. You know, God, like I, I said, God allows us to go through trials and tribulations to strengthen us. You know, that, that saying, whatever doesn't break us, well, strength, well, whatever doesn't break you will make you stronger, you know, it's so true, you know, what doesn't break you, you will come back stronger, because God provides power and direction we need to build a new life, you know, it's only, make God your number one. If you haven't already, make him your number one. Because he loves you. You know? And he's just so good. So, with that said, I will be right back.